all organisms are talking with each other. And they're using the oldest form of communication, their chemistry. It can be rather noisy out there at times. So different organisms have evolved ways to listen to specific partners in their communities. We can sometimes think about these chemicals as having other uses outside of nature and in the context of human applications. Welcome to Wavelengths, where we talk about our planet with experts from Scripps Institution of Oceanography, covering everything from the deep sea to the edge of the atmosphere. I'm Kate Furby, a marine biologist and journalist. I got my PhD here a few years ago, and now I'm back, learning more about what's happening at Scripps. I'm here today with Brad Moore, a professor of natural products. Thanks so much for joining me today, Brad. Kate, it's great to be here. When you say natural products, yeah. uh, some people think skin care or um, organic food. What is it that you study exactly? We study the chemistry of nature. We could study some of those things, you said, but really it's about the little special molecules that all of life makes. We study those, the reason that they make them, and what we might be able to do with them. All right, Brad, so what are we out here looking for? This, this little critter here <laughs> is called Plucamium. It's a, a red seaweed that grows here in La Jolla, actually up and down the coast of California. And it makes a special chemical that we study in my laboratory. Cool. Can, I, can you throw it to me? Can I throw it to you? Yeah. Can you catch? <laughs> so tell me how this little lady might cure cancer. Humans have been using nature to cure diseases since the dawn of time. We can think of many medicines in our own cabinets like aspirin that come from the bark of a willow tree. Many drugs like that have been developed from plants. The seaweed that we've been talking about, it's in the early stages of discovery. Have you had another natural product that made it, that is further along? Yeah, so we've been working with colleagues here at Scripps to develop a bacterial chemical. From a little bacterium lives in the bottom of the ocean. It makes a toxin that tells little things crawling in the sand not to eat it. And today, that chemical, its name is Marizumib, is in phase three clinical trials to treat a cancer called glioblastoma. It's a cancer of the brain. It has a magical property that allows this chemical to naturally get into the brain, which many chemicals don't. What other scientists in your field had to do was just physically go out and collect massive amounts of of organisms in order to make medicine, but now you can take just a small piece of one organism back to the lab and synthesize it. You could always synthesize it oh. in a chemical hood using chemicals that come from petroleum. Okay. Or the modern era is now just getting a small piece of the DNA out and putting it into yeast, and forever and ever that yeast will make that chemical for you. Cool. Okay, so you're taking yeast that we use to make bread and beer and teaching it how to make medicine. That's right. Every natural chemical links back to DNA, like cholesterol in us, or caffeine in your coffee from this morning. Remember, DNA is the building block of life. It's a genetic code that tells an organism how to make itself. Each organism's genetic code gives us a recipe for how to make those very chemicals naturally in the lab. So for example, we can put DNA from seaweed into baker's yeast to trick it into making a seaweed chemical. We can then test it in the lab and see what it does. Maybe it cures a disease in humans. With the genetic blueprint in hand, we're all set to train yeast or other microbes to become little chemical factories. It sounds like you're making this yeast do a lot of your dirty work. We certainly are. Do you pay it at all? Uh, we, we pay it as much sugar as it would like to eat. The, so that's how you get from seaweed to anti-cancer drug? That's amazing. Isn't it pretty cool? Yeah. And you can do this with almost anything? 
absolutely everything. All organisms are gems. They have special genomes with their special chemistry, and they're all trying to teach us something. And we just need to look a little closer at their DNA to get a sense of how we can use that to solve tomorrow's problems.